OMG, look at that. That came out of a dream I had. Hi everyone, it's Erlene of Erlene Garcia Art, and today I will be sharing with you some incense holders. The idea came from a dream that I had. This one is a fairy stone, which is the gray stone with faceted amethyst, a geode amethyst, a, a freshwater pearl, and cock feathers that have been dyed purple. Wow, that one is really, really cool. And then I just took a 26 gauge wire and wire wrapped everything to the burner. This one is amethyst with a little witch's cauldron, a pentagram, and a broom. Let's see, the turquoise colored stone is halite. That is a crystal point and look at Buddha's hand. The incense goes into the hand of Buddha and that is an agate slab that, oh my God, I love that one. And again, feathers as well. And the crystal point has an Isis facet on it, which that means it brings out your inner goddess. The green man is made out of ceramic and he has sheer man-made leaves. That's a stone is preonite. There's cock feathers, there's duck feathers, and there's a green banded agate, lava, turquoise, and these little tiny red vintage white heart beads that are my favorite beads. And the beads come from Africa. The next one is vintage and found objects. That little piece there was found with a metal detector up in Ventura on a beach in the sand. The other little pieces, some are vintage and were given to me to add into my collection. And the others I purchased at a bead show. This round medallion at the bottom is quite old. And then I did a really cool type of wire wrapping to securely hold each piece. That would look totally awesome in somebody's religious altar. This piece is a really fun piece. It has one single crystal point and then a cluster of crystals, a skeleton hand that I attached a little agate stone to look like a ring, a miniature Ouija board, a little pixie that I hid underneath the crystal cluster. I love that little guy. Um, a little tarot card and a fortune teller. That is totally cool. That would look great in someone's um, fortune telling booth. Just letting the incense burn. And by the way, you can have two incense in that burner. This one is for your chakras, featuring amethyst, kyanite, turquoise, malachite, citrine, carnelian, and red jade. And this little Buddha at the bottom was also found on the beach with the metal detector. And I featured him with the chakra stones to give you a Zen feeling. And this is a small one and it is really, really pretty. And of course it would be great for a man or a woman, totally unisex. Now look at this box of happiness with all of my crystals. So let's choose some and get started making one of these fabulous incense burners that would be a great gift for anyone. Now there's some Aura Rose Quartz, Tangerine Quartz. I don't know what I'm choosing here. Let's just see. I'm again watching it along with you. So this is a 26 gauge wire and I really thought it was perfect. This little piece of pottery is a found piece and I purchased that from a private collector. Each piece that I wire wrap, I cut off about 12 inches and I feel that that's enough to work with because you don't want to have too much where you get all tangled. I will be using different pliers. This is the needle nose pliers and I'm just going to do a little coil twist and then I am going to trim it and squeeze the coils together. Make sure that there are no rough edges. You don't want it to scratch somebody's furniture or fingers when they're admiring your work. These make 
great gifts or you can make a few of them and sell them to your little metaphysical shop that might be nearby and don't be afraid to ask a nice price because you are taking time to make something really pretty it is a piece of art and you are using your nice beads and crystals and hopefully feathers if you have feathers to put in there now i'm going to wrap around the front make sure that you hold your item in place and secure the coils and then you can go back and twist each little piece to the left or to the right don't be afraid to be firm but be delicate at the same time you don't want to scratch the piece that you're working on and you don't want to scratch the incense burner make sure that you don't cover up your hole where the incense is going to go just keep twisting to the left to the right and don't panic it will come out really pretty once you continue getting the hang of it if you're new at this you will see that it comes out and any little mistake is hidden and I'm using round nose pliers there to twist don't forget to twist the back it is important that it looks as pretty as the front and if you kind of keep in mind like it should look like a lightning bolt then it's just easy to keep going now this is a tangerine or a quartz and I'm going to clip off about 12 inches of wire and just do a simple wrap around so I can see where I want to place it on the holder. I found that it was easier to wrap each piece and then connect them together. And no one will ever know that this was done in several pieces. And this is why I said you need 12 inches of wire because it's so much easier to work with than three feet of wire where you're being tangled and having a panic attack. So this is fun, there's no reason to be stressed out. This is to relieve any stress and you just think about your art. You don't think about anything that is going on around you. So basically you're gonna connect your little piece of wire to any place that you feel it will stay firmly. And then that way you can finish this off, do your little coils, it adds to the design, and then trim it squeeze the coils together so it looks really nice and no one will know where you began or ended that's the whole look of the wire wrapping on this and you can add as many pieces as you like just make sure that at the top of the incense burner it is going up at an angle so you don't want to make it too top heavy where the bottom doesn't stay down so I try to just balance it out, make sure some is in the middle, some is at the very end, or even like the Shakwa one that we looked at earlier, you could just do one simple strand of your favorite beads going across. You can even use one large tube bead, or you can use your favorite crystal. This allows you to use anything that you have on hand. You can even use a little perfume bottle. Sky's the limit, think out of the box. Use what you have, maybe it's a favorite charm or even a Cracker Jack charm. You might have something that is vintage in your collection and try to feature them all together so they complement each other. With the crystals and the pottery, I'm trying to tell a silent story because the pottery has been unearthed and the crystals have been around for thousands of years. The pyrite, I chose that because pyrite can either expel a ghost or invite ghost. So I wanted to have like a connection where the pottery is so vintage and old and then the pyrite connect together. And in my own way, I'm telling a silent story. And I always give the buyer the choice to request the metaphysical properties behind each item that I create. It's up to them. Some just like it the way it looks. Some need to know the meanings of the stones. And some will even request special stones to go in a jewelry piece where they receive the metaphysical properties, the empowerment 
from a certain stone. So when you're making this, make sure that you test it with your incense to make sure that it's going to hold the incense upright and correctly like it's supposed to. Wow, look at that crystal. It is so clear and so beautiful. I would love to receive a gift like this. I do burn incense and I am teaching myself how to make incense. What I'm going to do in the future is when I sell my incense burners, I'm going to include as a little free thank you gift some handmade incense that will be really exciting now there's the pyrite it is a cube it does grow that way i love pyrite once i started reading up on it and finding out all of the metaphysical properties that it has it just intrigued me so much um, i gave a piece to a ghost hunter that i know and he was very happy to receive the pyrite and said he would carry it in his pocket when he's out searching for the ghost. So that was fun. Now right here, I am pressing in any loose wire. Double check your artwork. That looks super cool. Now you could leave it like that, or I decided I wanted to add feathers and that big bundle of feathers, those are called cock feathers. I found that amazing bundle for only $8 at the Goodwill. So check out the Goodwill when you can. You never know what you might find. Now, those are duck feathers, and I'm going to attach these by using sinew. Not a lot of people know what this is. If you have ever come across a dream catcher, this is the webbing, the material that they use for the webbing. And I love the way that it looks in my artwork. A lot of Native Americans use it in many different pieces of their artwork, some in the leather. So what I'm going to do is wrap the feathers, quills together, and all you have to do is one or two knots. This is a sticky element, so you can just tie it once. And it's also easy to split. This is a very strong thread-like material and I really enjoy working with this. So I usually leave the ends dangling and I will thread a couple of beads on there. You do not need a needle because it is waxy and all you have to do is like twist it and it makes its own point and it allows you to put your beads on there very easily. So I'm going to add the turquoise after I tie about three knots to secure the feathers to the base of the incense burner. Now just split it into two equal parts, twist. You might have to trim if there's like a little straggly thread somewhere and just add your turquoise or whatever beads you, you want to add at the end. And if the hole is small, just tie one knot. If the hole is a little bit bigger, tie two overhand knots. I'm using real turquoise that I purchased at a bead and gem show that was recently here in Pasadena, California. If you cannot find real turquoise chips, you can buy dyed halite, and I have seen it at Michael's and Hobby Lobby, or maybe you might have a great local bead store in your area. Halite is considered white turquoise, and they dye it and crush it in a multitude of colors and easy accessible. By the way, you can buy the sinew at Tandy Leathers or Hobby Lobby and the spool that I'm holding cost around $22. They do sell it in smaller spools just in case you need it. Now, you can also use leather if you don't have sinew and it will do the same thing, of course. Now, I'm using bone that has been dyed. It's called batik bone, B-A-T-I-K, and lava beads, which can also be found at Michael's for a few dollars in a variety of sizes and colors. Wow, look at that. I'm really proud of myself. That came out super cool. And of course, I put my label on the bottom. Always make sure that you sign 
your work or if you have a sticker, put the sticker on it. I used a permanent marker and signed my name on the back of my other ones. Now, let's make another one that's super quick. I just grabbed a few beads there so you can have an idea. If you wanna keep it earthy, that would be the way to go. I happen to have this beautiful piece of agate slab and I broke it. I did save it for something else and I'm glad I did. So it will make a perfect element on this particular holder. Look at that. So on Buddha's hand, I'm gonna make sure that the inset slides in between. So I'm going to hold it in place with the incense so I don't accidentally cover the hole. And the whole idea is that I want the incense to lay through the hand. I found the Buddha's hand at the gem show also. And when you see something cool like that, buy it because you never know when that opportunity arises again. Now the bottom part there, that is dyed howlite. It does look like turquoise. And always let your customers know that it is halite and not turquoise because you don't want them thinking that it's turquoise and then they get home and find out that it's not. So let's take a quick look at the other pieces that we made. Oh my gosh, I really like, oh, I love all of them. It's going to be hard to part with these, but I must share them with the world. So be sure and look around, find any of your found objects antique pieces, stones, crystals, beads, feathers, you name it, start creating and always think out of the box because people like original pieces. And I want you to succeed as an artist. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your time. I look forward to visiting with you again. Have a happy day. Thanks, bye.